All right. So I just wanted to remind everybody that all classes are recorded now. And um, that is for people that can't make the, the class schedule at the time that I'm offering. I'm hoping to continue with the 8 a.m. slot now that we've tested it with the school bandwidth and everybody seems to be doing okay sharing bandwidth at 8 a.m. Um, but I also wanted to let you know if there's ever a class that's really helpful for you or that you want <clears throat> to do again, you can buy the class uh, and you have the link forever. So it's um, another way to just kind of encourage your home practice and have a class to do if, you know, if there's no yoga class that day, you can have access to these links. And um, I just wanted to let you guys know that's an option now. So we're going to do a forward bending practice today. And um, the emphasis is on the stability of the sacrum in our forward bends. A lot of times you might sense your sacrum rotating in forward bending. And so we're going to do a lot of work to stabilize there because it's never the goal of forward bending to injure or exacerbate lower back issues. So um, we're going to see if we can find some stability in the lower back as we go deeper into our forward bends. So let's come into our less favored cross-legged position, whatever that is for you. Take some time to cross at the mid shins, be towards the tops of your feet, attempt to align yourself evenly over your sitting bones, and really just find yourself centered above the sitting bones. So we have front sitting bones, we have back sitting bones. So feel yourself really on the very centers and then adjusting the shoulders to line up with your hips. Sometimes you feel the legs float up here, so encourage your legs to feel heavy, to descend, start to lengthen your spine up, coil your shoulder blades in towards your chest, and lengthen from the chin to the base of the skull, just lengthening the back of the neck, but also aligning the skull over the spine. Keeping your shoulders back, joining the hands in front of the heart. Close the eyes and look away from your brain. And just observe yourself here. There's ways, there's layers that we can observe. We can observe the layer of the physical body. We can observe the energy, the breath, the mind, the fluctuations of the brain. Just always really trying to show up with a clear picture of how we are beginning a practice. There's no way to begin your practice then from where you are. And if there's any sort of judgment coming in here, just replace that with a genuine interest, curiosity. This is a, a laboratory for learning about ourselves. So replacing any judgment that might shut down that learning, and just really opening yourself up to whatever is true today, honoring that, and just inviting a sense of ease, of friendliness into this practice. And when you're ready without rounding the back, lower your chin to your chest. Release your hands and raise your head. Allow your eyes to gently open. And welcome to everyone. Right. We're going to come into child's pose first, but in a way that we don't usually take the pose. Um, we're going to join the knees. And when the knees are joined, you have less space for the torso to come down and you're giving good pressure to your spine. It's a great way to open up the posterior spine with the knees joined. You'll feel it's a different version of the pose. So knees are joined, feet are joined. And you can stack your fists or you could use a block maybe. Um, so you don't have to bring your head to the floor because you are farther away from the floor now. And that might not be good for your neck. So find a way to prop your forehead. And just feel what the pressure of the thighs against the chest is doing for you and how you get a chance to really yawn open the back of your spine. And especially when you breathe in. So try a couple deep inhales. 
and really encourage the sacrum to draw away from your skull. Try to roll your sitting bones down towards your heels and try to dig your toes into the floor a little bit. So you're connecting with the floor. There's a tendency for <clears throat> momentum to shift us forward here. So anchoring into your hips, your toenails, and just a couple more breaths. Wonderful. So now we're going to come into the more classical position where the knees are separated. And if you feel like you need a little support, tuck something between your buttocks and your heels so you can really sit back deeply. You can have some support if you need it but we're gonna be moving sideways and we are gonna to go to the left to begin with. So start to kind of raise your head, raise your torso, walk your hands left, come away from the floor enough that you can really center your chest over your spine. And then you're gonna extend your arms forward and just bow your head. You don't have to connect your forehead with anything, but try to align your ears between your arms. And just bring some length, some attention to the sides of your torso becoming more even. So in most of our twists today, we're gonna to move sideways and some of our twists, we're gonna twist. I'm sorry, I meant to say most of our forward bends. We're gonna move sideways and some of our forward bends, we're going to twist. So we're gonna bring a twist into child's pose here from this side movement. So take your right elbow outside your left knee or thigh, just so you have a connection there. And then slide your left arms farther to the left. And then use your hands to turn your spine so that you're peeling your chest away from the floor. Kind of corkscrew the spine. But see if you can adjust your sacrum in a way that it's more level with the floor. Don't let it rotate. This is part of the reason we can kind of get uh, a little bit uh, hyper lax in the twists. We want to stabilize. So try to align your sacrum more level with the floor. Even though it wants to rotate right side down. Good, and just a little bit of an experience there. You're gonna start to help yourself out of the twist, extend your arms forward and come back around and just keep moving to the right now. We'll go to the right for the side movement first. So lifting yourself enough that you can clear the space. You can kind of lay down the front body over the right thigh, extend your arms forward and bow your head. And you might sense here, you're getting a little bunched up in the right hip space. So roll the right hip back. And now we're going to do the same thing over here. You're going to take your left elbow outside of your right knee or maybe your thigh. Just make some sort of a connection there for leverage. Slide your right hand farther out to the right. And then just, again, wind the spine in a gentle twist. Extend through the crown of the head. And you're going to feel slope down on the left sacrum here. So lift your left sacrum slightly. Roll down the right lower back. And extend through the top of your head. Wonderful. Finish the exhalation and then help yourself unwind your spine. Come back to center. And we're going to release the legs in downward facing dog. So here's where we're going to use a chair if we need to, because we're going to be working with this pose a little bit longer than normal. So you might work from a chair as if you're in a half standing forward bend, your legs are upright and you're going to reach for the chair and your work will look more like a warrior three than um, an ekapata. We're gonna be raising one leg in downward dog. So feel free to stand up and work from the chair. I think Tisha, you're gonna do that. And uh, anybody else that's suffering with wrist issues. And we're gonna begin curling the toes underneath, exhale, extend the legs. Yep. Yep, and make your torso level with the floor, Tisha, that's perfect. 
So I want you just to kind of scan your attention across the lower back and just notice how even it is. And obviously it's even because our legs are symmetrically placed and we're not rotating anything. And just take a few moments opening the backs of your knees from all those child's poses. Try to create more evenness to your torso, not falling into the front body. Scoop the front body and bring it toward the back body. And now on an exhalation, you're going to extend your left leg up and observe what happens to your sacrum. So for most of us, we sense a falling of the right sacrum and elevating of the left sacrum. So we're going to attempt to adjust and bring our sacrum back to level. So see if you can pull up on that right femur bone, roll down the outer left hip space. And we want both legs as extended as we can make them, as straight as we can make them. And the left leg as high as you can bring it without rotating the sacrum. Touch down with your toes. Establish the two feet down version of downward facing dog. Take another in breath and on your exhalation, extend the right leg up. Observe your sacrum, keep it level. Don't roll up with the right hip side. And if you do, try to adjust and correct for that to bring that sacrum in a more level position. Extending both legs completely. Go ahead and touch down with the right toes. And then walk yourself in. Place your feet so they're hip distance. And then catch your opposite elbows in your hands. And just rest here quietly, resting Uttanasana. Attempt to straighten your legs, but if there's still a bend in the knees, that's okay. We have to start from where we are. We're moving towards straighter legs, but sometimes you have to still work with a bent knee. Change the crossing of the arms and just take a few more breaths. And drop the hands, bend your knees, take hold of your hips, and on an in-breath, bring yourself up. And anytime you bring yourself up, use your stomach muscles to support your spine. We're going to take our two blocks. We're going to do Uttanasana, standing forward bend, with the forward bend directly, the sideways movement, and a twist. So we'll explore those same actions from this pose. So feet are separated hip distance, and that's gonna be maintained for the sideways movement and for the twist. So from here, raise the arms and just invite a big feeling of space to your torso, to the back of the neck. Firm your legs, plant your feet. Come to the top of the in-breath, and on an exhalation, extend forward and touch your blocks. Put them in line with your shoulders, and then keep looking forward. And balance your feet. Straighten your legs. Come to the top of the in-breath. On the exhale, spread your chest toward your thighs. Lower the blocks if you don't need as much height. You can always move your hands to the floor if that's accessible to you. Keep your feet balanced, and if you notice the knees start to bend, go back to taller blocks and looking forward and re-extend your legs. So keep cultivating more depth here. Last exhale. Inhale. Look forward again and take your blocks. And we're gonna be switching the blocks, sliding the blocks to the right. So step your blocks to the right. And as you do that, does everybody notice the right hip swivels back, the left hip swivels forward? So we don't wanna do that. We want the sacrum to stay level like you're stuck between two panes of glass with your hips. So adjust your hips. You're going to bring the right hip forward, left hip back so that the sacrum is still level. 
your torso should be lining up with your right leg. So we kind of slid the torso. Look forward, take an inhale, hands are shoulder width apart, and exhale, spread the torso toward the right leg. And if you don't need as much height, again, always kind of come to your own edge, your deepest physical position in the pose that's holding wise actions, it's sustainable, the breath can flow easily. So this is Parjva Uttanasana, meaning sideways, standing forward bend. On an in-breath, you'll come back to your two taller blocks, kind of the Arda Parjva Uttanasana, meaning half sideways forward bend. And now we're going to start to walk the blocks over to the left. And again, just kind of sense how we rotate left hip back, that kind of naturally occurs. Try to slide your torso to the left. Take a look forward, big inhale. And then exhale, spreading the length of the chest, the torso toward the left leg. Lower the blocks if you don't need as much height. And do the work that's required to keep that left hip forward, right hip back so that we have that sacrum really level. Now come back to center. You're gonna look forward first, walk yourself center, bend your knees, take hold of your hips, use your stomach muscles, come all the way up. Okay, so I see a few people are a little uncomfortable. Let's come into a quick gentle back bend just so we can kind of bring some balance to all this forward extension. So take your hands in a clasping position behind your back, roll your shoulders back, extend your arms so the elbows straighten, and open your palms so they're as wide as can be. And take a sideways view here. Move your tailbone in, lift and spread your chest. And on an exhalation, take the hands lower and take your gaze higher. Compact your front thighs back. Keep moving the tailbone into the body toward the front body. And rather than jamming your shoulder blades together, try to move the shoulder blades and the spine toward the front body. And now inhale and lengthen up and out of it. Release your clasping hands, shake out your wrists if you need to. And we're gonna come back to Uttanasana, but this time we're going to twist it. So you don't actually need your blocks for this. You can put those aside. You're gonna use your own body for support. And we still want the space between the feet because we need clearance for the torso. So take hold of your hips, inhale, lift your chest, tighten the elbows a little bit closer together, open up the front body, and then maintain as much of that as you take your hands down. You're gonna bring the right hand to the outer, sorry, left hand to the outer right shin or ankle, and then your right hand, back of the hand, slides to the left side body. And you're gonna to start to turn your chest like it's looking off to the right. And notice how the right hip wants to swivel back. Draw the right hip gently forward to stabilize the lower back. Extend through the top of your head to keep length on your spine. Try to bring the left armpit chest as much to the right as you can. Roll the right shoulder back. You can always use a chair here if you feel like the distance to the floor or to your leg or ankle is too far. You can plant that left hand on a chair. And we're going to gently passively come through center ragdoll style. So let your arms in this one, this version, just dangle. Let your head dangle. Let your knees be as soft as they need to be. And see if you can just release along your spine. Enjoy a break from gravity. Enjoy passivity. Bend your knees a little bit more. Take hold of your hips. Use your stomach muscles. Engage that to help you come up. Good. And now we're going to do the other side. So this is Paravrita Uttanasana, meaning we're twisting the standing forward bend. So again, from this position, hands on hips, lift and spread your chest, tighten the elbows, move the tailbone in, and just encourage that feeling of openness in the chest that we, we want to maintain. 
for a forward bend. You want to keep the breast going forward. Good. And now you're going to come forward with the right hand or reaching for the outer left leg, or you could be planting it to a chair. That's really your call if you need that. So the outer left leg with the right hand, the left back of your hand slides into the into contact with your right side body. And then you're going to use your arms for leverage. Turn your chest to point to the left. Notice how the left hip pulls back. So bring your left hip forward, right hip back. Keep the sacrum really level. Extend through the crown of your head. Breathe. Use your stomach muscles. Support your back this way. Roll the top shoulder back. Bring the bottom shoulder to the left as much as you can. Armpit chest to the left. Good. One more. Squeeze out one more exhale here. And then inhale passively ragdoll. Empty coat sleeves for arms. Soften up your knees a little bit. Dangle. Really suspend the torso and the skull. Let gravity extend the sides of the trunk. And then bend your knees. Take hold of your hips. Use the stomach muscles, engage them, come all the way up. Beautiful. Good. Step the feet together. Let's just collect ourselves in mountain pose. So line your shoulders up with your heels, your hips. Move the flesh of the buttocks into the body. Compact the front thighs toward the backs of the thighs. Adjust from the chin to the base of the skull to align the skull. And drop any holding you're doing in your shoulders. Don't hold your shoulders. Drop the shoulders. Try to revolve the flesh of the inner upper arms out. You might sense your palms starting to face forward. Okay, so sensing how the work you're doing is affecting the back. We need to check in. Forward bends are always a little bit of a, a cautionary tale because we get so much forward extension that we need to avoid overdoing here and keep balance in mind with our practice. So we're going to come into one more standing pose um, forward bend, Parjvottanasana. We're going to do number one with hand support, number two without it. So we're going to use our blocks and for some of you might prefer a chair seat. So it's your call again, how much height you need today to have the best version of your pose. So we'll put the chair, the blocks to the right. And then separate the feet, jump or step the feet wide. Take hold of your hips. And we're gonna be turning to look to the right. So angling out the right toes 90 degrees and angling the left toes 60 to 80 degrees. Take your hands and manually steer the hips to become level. Sacrum as well. So we have asymmetry starting the pose. We have to adjust the sacrum right away. Left hip comes forward, right hip moves back. Sacrum is level. Draw the elbows in, push in on the tailbone and fully extend your left leg. No quasi bent, uh, straight leg. Fully extend the left leg. Good, everybody looks good. Raise the arms. Imagine you're holding a block between your hands. Pressurize your hands toward that block, that imaginary block. Take an inhale and your exhale extend forward halfway. Align your torso with your right leg and aim for those two blocks. And then bring the hands down. Put the blocks to either side of the right foot. And notice how we keep pulling back in that left sacrum. Roll the left sacrum forward. Shoot the right sacrum back. And then just like you did with the sideways version of Uttanasana, slide your torso so it's perfectly lined up with right leg. Roll full weight into your right big toe and left small toe to equalize the momentum of this pose, which shifts us right. So you're shifting things left by rolling weight into right big toe, left small toe. Come to the top of the inhale, on the exhale, soften, extend the trunk, 
toward the right shin, bow the head. Finish your exhale. Inhale, look forward. Clamp your hips together. Bring your hands to your hips. Inhale, come all the way up. Make sure you're using the stomach muscles every time you come up. This is one way we protect the back. Okay, so same pose, other side. You can carry your blocks or move your chair to the left. And we'll do the setup, same thing. So left toes 90 degrees, right toes 60 to 80. Grab those hips and steer them. Bring that outer right hip forward. Shoot that left outer hip back. Firm both legs. Make sure you're extending the back leg completely. Draw the elbows in, shoulder blades in. Push in on the tailbone. And then raise the arms and imagine you're holding a block between your hands. Come to the top of the in-breath. Exhale, extend forward, lining yourself up with left leg. Scan that sacrum with your attention. Bring the hands onto the blocks, evenly placed around inner and outer left foot. Sense how we roll weight to the left here. So to counter that, roll into left big toe, right small toe. Try to line the chest up perfectly with the left shin. Keep the sacrum in your kind of your foremost primary objective that we're keeping that very level. We're not letting right hip rotate back or right sacrum. Come to the top of the in-breath, exhale, bow deeply toward the left leg. So don't fall into your stomach. Just draw the abdominals toward the back. Spread the abdominals toward the back. The only thing pushing out should be the breastbone. Keep shifting weight. Cross the feet to the right. Wonderful. Finish your exhale. Look forward. Clamp the hips like there's a vice around them. Use your stomach muscles. Grab your hips and inhale. Come up. Okay, so for the second version of that, I said we're doing hands-free, but if you need hand support to keep those wise actions going, you're gonna repeat. And you might do lower hand support, but always make sure you're using the propping needed. We're not a synchronized yoga team, as I like to say. So you gotta do what your body needs today. So for hands free, we're going to try to take Pashima Namaskarasana, meaning reverse prayer behind the back. So we start with the hands low and sealed together, fingers pointing down. And then we start to slide the fingertips and pinky onto the spine and work our way up to the shoulder blade line. However, for most of us, this is a pose that comes up with time and we have to work with modifications until we have this Pashima Namaskarasana, working with hands sealed and shoulders externally rotated. So you could either go to Badahastasana here, meaning bound hands, or Badahastasana here. If you're doing the forearms or clasping, just keep track of your favorite position because on left side you'll, you'll challenge that. Okay. All right, so we're going to take our position. If you're doing hands free, you can just keep your arms relaxed. I mean, not hands free, if you're using your hands on the floor. We're going to separate the feet wide. And we're going to be moving back to the right side. So take some time setting up your legs. Try to draw that right hip back, left hip forward, and fully extend the left leg. And use the position of your arms to help you lift the breastbone up. Take the tailbone in. Come to the top of the inhale. Exhale halfway down so your trunk is level with the earth. Bring the breastbone in line with the right leg and shift weight across the feet to the left. Good. Notice the sacrum, keep it level. Exhale, bow deeply toward the right leg. You can feel what wants to happen. The right sacrum wants to rotate back. 
So gently counter that. Roll the, the left sacrum forward. Okay, where's the stomach? Hopefully you're not just falling into the abdomen. So engage the stomach muscles. Lift them toward the back body. Use them to extend deeper and farther over the right leg. Okay, we're gonna come up now. So anchor into left heel, look forward, clamp the hips together and come all the way up. Keep those stomach muscles engaged. And turn the feet forward. So if you're in reverse prayer, I can't see behind your backs, but you'll just keep that. If you're in one of those alternates, you're gonna take the opposite interlock or the opposite forearm grab. So make sure you're just kind of always checking in with those little habits we have in the body. If you're coming back to hands down, your arms can be free for now. Okay, so find the position you're working with with your arms. We're gonna move to the left and take some time to feel both legs fully extended, the tailbone moving in, the chest is lifted and spread, the shoulders are externally rotated. Come to the top of the in-breath and exhale halfway forward. Level sacrum. Good, next exhale, bow deeply toward the left leg. Bring the outer right sacrum forward. Roll the outer left sacrum back. Transfer weight across the feet to the right. And can you imagine that the sides of the torso are even? And if they don't feel even, can you attempt to create more evenness to the length of the sides of the trunk? Scoop the belly toward the back body. Finish the exhalation, anchor into right heel, look forward, use your stomach muscles, come all the way up. And turn the toes forward. Release your arms as if you're in a standing Shavasana. Just extend the arms 45 degrees from the trunk. If there's little sprinklers coming off your fingertips, watering the ground. Good. So before we move to the floor, we're going to take Prasarita Padatanasana with the hand stretching forward. So for some of us, the, the floor is really far away. You can work with blocks or you could even work with your chair again out in front of you. So whatever you need, blocks, chair, have that in front of you. And then separate your feet wide, looking for an equilateral triangle. So the space between the feet is equal to one of your own legs. Put your toes in line with your heels. And I want you to just take a moment to feel your legs here and notice maybe, if you can, if you can feel it, that these both legs here, are the same as the back leg in the pose you just did, part in Parjavottanasana. So we want that firmness, we want that compaction, we want the heels engaging into the floor, the inner arches lifted. Okay, inhale, raise the arms. Keep the space of the torso, lengthen forward, use your stomach muscles to support your back and bring your hands onto the chair, the blocks or the floor directly. And without your hips coming with you, walk the hands out as far as you can forward. We're gonna get as spacious as we can here. Once your hands are as far forward as they're going to be, take one more look forward, one more in breath, and then bow the head and just hold this very spacious version of Prasarita Padatanasana. Spread feet forward bend. Relax any tension from your neck. Keep compacting the front thighs back and don't fall into your abdomen. So let the abdomen float toward the back body. Keep the breastbone the most forward thing of the front torso. A nice symmetrical pose for the lower back. No effort involved to equalize. It's neutrally symmetrical. And just a couple more Deep breaths. Good. 
And now start to walk the hands in and then walk your feet closer together. Bend your knees a little bit. And one last time, engage your core muscles and bring yourself up. Good. Nice job. Okay, so we're gonna do a couple seated poses and you're gonna need a strap and a blanket. And give yourself enough height under your sitting bones that you can find a vertical sacrum. We don't want it tipping back. And you can just join your legs first. So we're going to use a strap to kind of sense the lower back. And we're also going to use the strap as a steering wheel. So it's, it's kind of a fun way to use a strap. So you're going to need to make a, a loop. Because oftentimes with these concepts, you don't have anything physically touching you. So it's all about your proprioception, where you think you are in space. So sometimes we need the props to tell us if that's correct or if we're delusional and maybe we have different ideas than what's actually going on. So the props are a great way to kind of check in um, with these concepts that sometimes can be not very tangible. So we're gonna, what we're gonna do is we're gonna come into a few seated poses with the strap uh, around the lower back and then also connected to whichever leg we're going to extend. So in this case, we're going to connect it with the left foot. And what you wanna kinda of do is set the strap up so that you have the tail pulling toward yourself to tighten. It's really awkward to try to tighten pulling away from yourself. So all you need to do if you're pulling away from yourself is move your rings to the other side of your leg. Okay, and then you'll be pulling toward yourself. We don't want the loop right under the foot. So make sure that you're not feeling that belt uh, buckle on your back or on your foot. Just have it somewhere where it's not going to be an issue. Okay, so we're going to be keeping left leg straight. We have the contact around the lower back. Make sure you're your strap is like a guitar string. It's not, you know, super loose. You want it taut. And <clears throat> we're gonna drag the left, oh, sorry, the right leg into Janyushrasana position. So you can take your fingers and kind of roll the flesh of the inner thigh right behind the knee, roll it back, take the knee back. And right here, do you guys all feel the right belt being kind of uh, more pressure? So it's good feedback here. So I want you to grab hold of your, oh, and don't forget to prop your right knee if you need that. So put something there. If your knee is floating, if you're gripping in your thigh, those are clues we need a little support. We really want the knee down. Okay, so everybody just notice passively how we kind of, the torso turns to the right, uh, the left sacrum rotates forward, the right sacrum rotates back. So everybody feel that kind of thing? <clears throat> Okay, so grab hold of your strap with both hands and you're going to pull with your left hand and push with your right. So use it like a steering wheel. And give your lower back that feedback. Notice how if we pull with the left hand and push with the right, we're bringing the right sacrum forward, we're, we're adjusting the left sacrum back. But keep anchoring into your right leg. This is the very active leg. So don't just passively let it sit there. Extend through the right inner thigh, out through the right knee. Good. And now keep what you have across the lower back and also with this very active right leg, raise the arms and look down at the breastbone and see how well lined up with your left leg it is. And as you adjust and line it up more, don't let the sacrum shift. Try to keep it stabilized. Come to the top of the in breath, exhale, extend forward. If you can't grab your foot, grab your strap and pull. And if you want to keep using the steering wheel method with the strap as you pull, you can do that. It's a great way to give feedback to your pose. If you need to tighten the strap, you can do that. It does get a little looser once we fold forward. 
We're encouraging right lower back forward and we're encouraging left lower back back. Keep extending out through the right inner knee. Good. Are the sides of the trunk even? Can you make them more even? Finish up your exhalation. Look forward, engage the core muscles, and inhale, come up. Good. Now you should be able to kind of soften and bend the left knee and slip your right foot into your strap, freeing the left leg to be the new Janya Shushasana leg. So we need to maybe, if you tightened your belt, you might need to loosen it for the first stage here. <clears throat> okay, so hopefully this is helpful. The worst thing is to do all these funny things with props and get nothing out of it, then it's just annoying. So hopefully you felt something there. I can't really, of course, hear you guys, but um, <clears throat> we're gonna do the same setup here. So roll the flesh. You might move the kind of the thigh away. You might roll the calf muscle, whatever works to help bring the heel in, left heel up to the upper inner thigh. Feel free to take that left knee back behind the left hip for a deeper pose. But then notice what's happening. We feel left sacrum pull back. We feel the torso turning left, not where we want it to be. So you're gonna grab your strap, push with your left hand, pull with your right hand and keep driving the action of the, the left leg so you're working that anchored leg. Feel the sacrum more level here. Keep that, raise the arms, come to the top of the in-breath and exhale, come forward. Grab the, the strap or the foot. You might need to tighten up to keep getting good feedback. You might work with the strap and keep adjusting the left side forward, the right side back. Steer your torso to be really perfectly lined up with the right leg. Create even extension to the sides of the trunk. Good, so use the strap like a steering wheel. Pull with the right, push with the left. Last exhalation. And then finish up, look forward, engage your stomach muscles and come all the way up. And just softly bend to release the strap from the foot. You can move the strap away. We're gonna do one more pose. You might want the strap though for folding forward, but we're not gonna use it like a steering wheel anymore. And if you think you're gonna need it to grab hold of your foot, feel free to open it up so you can use it. So we'll come into Marichyasana. Seated forward fold, and we're gonna start it from a twist. So begin from Dandasana, extend your legs, sit up tall. Again, we're gonna bend the right knee first. So take both hands underneath the right knee, draw the heel in toward the sitting bone. So the first thing we wanna do is twist away from this bent knee side so that we can get really nice deep extension over the left leg. So place your left hand next to your left hip and inhale, raise the right arm up. And on your exhale, drop the right elbow inside the right knee and squeeze the two together. Slide your left hand right behind you so it's centered up behind your back and turning really well to the left. So we tend to fall to the back of the sitting bones here. Can you create a way to bring weight forward over the sitting bones? We're not leaning back. Okay, now keep what you have, but extend the right arm. Turn the right palm to face to the right. Yep. Push yourself forward. So you're lengthening the arm forward. And can you grab the outer left foot or Press your hand against your leg. We're not in the forward bend yet. We're still turning. Okay, holding the outer foot or pressing your hand against the leg, point your chest to the left. Squeeze your right knee to the right shoulder. Good, 
Now we should be really well lined up with the left leg. You're holding the foot with your right hand. Transfer the right hand to the inner foot. If you're gonna work with the strap, take hold of the foot with your strap. If you're gonna work directly with your hands, now bring your left hand onto the outer left foot. Keep squeezing the right knee to the right shoulder. Pull back. Exhale, extend over the left leg. Now sense what your sacrum is doing. For most of us, right sacrum rolls back, left rolls forward. So counter that, make very precise, fine-tuned adjustments to bring that left sacrum back, right sacrum forward so it becomes more level. Another way you can think about this is clamping your feet towards each other. For some of us, it, to bring attention there rather than the sacrum it was a different doorway, but it has the same effect. Bring the feet toward each other, towards each other. Good. Now we're going to leave the pose. So remember the stomach muscles are important for back safety. So once you let go of the strap or the foot, engage the core muscles to the back, raise the arms, release the arms and extend the right leg. Give your legs a shake. Give yourself a pat on the back. <laughs> you guys are doing great. So we're almost to the finish line here. We're gonna do the other side, Marityasana, starting with the twist to get the full, the deepest version of extension that we can. So that's why we're starting with the twist. So just kind of scooping the back of that left knee, dragging the heel in, finding the top centers of the sitting bones, and you need to maybe adjust the foot forward to do that. For some of us, we have to wiggle the foot forward so we can be over the sitting bones. Good. Right hand next to the right hip. Inhale, raise the left arm. And on the exhale, drop the left elbow inside the left knee. Squeeze the two together. Slide your right hand behind your back. Center it up and start to turn your chest to the right. And you keep the right sacrum forward. Don't let it rotate back. Nice. So stage two of this twist, so not yet the full forward bend head on. We're still gonna twist a little bit, but now we're gonna angle forward. So without changing anything, extend the right arm level with the floor. Rotate the arm so your left palm faces to the left. Exactly. And then lengthen your torso, lean forward, and reach for the outer right foot or leg. Make some connection there. Turning the chest more to the right. And now you might simply take your left hand to the inner right foot and grab the outer right foot, or you might work with a strap. But now we are gonna come directly over the leg. Start by pulling back on the strap of the foot, to move the chest forward, engage the stomach muscles back. Try to find that very level sacrum. Bring that left sacrum forward. Exhale, bow deeply over the right leg. To adjust the sacrum, you might prefer to squeeze the feet toward each other. Scan the sides of the trunk, sense their evenness, create more evenness if needed. Wonderful. Okay, prepare yourself to come up by looking forward, bring the stomach muscles deeper into the back body, raise the arms, come up on the in-breath, and exhale, release the arms down. Extend your leg, shake them up. Good. So now we're gonna come into a mild back bend just so that we can relieve um, <clears throat> the forward extension from the spine and kind of gain neutral ground again. So we're going to create some sort of a setup. Some of you have bolsters at home, in which case you'll use the bolster. We're gonna do cross bolsters. So we're gonna basically be creating a prop setup that looks like an X formation with the top part of the X running with the spine so the lower part of your X will be horizontal. And you might work with two rolled blankets. 
You might roll up your mat if you don't have extra blankets. You can always work with a mat roll. If you have lots of blankets, but you only have one bolster, you could fab, you could kind of um, improvise by rolling two blankets to create the second bolster. So it's, there's lots of options. If you're really short on props, you can always just put a block under your sacrum and elevate that way. So find a way to be elevating the lower back. And once you have that set up, cross bolsters, or maybe you're going minimal and you're just gonna do a block, you're going to be sitting on the cross bolsters. If you're using a block, which I don't see anybody doing, you don't wanna come onto it this way. You of course wanna raise your hips and slide it under you from that position. But the idea here is to have kind of the hip line being the highest position once you're up there and the shoulders and head coming down. As you can see, if my shoulders aren't down completely, my chin wags in the air. We don't want that. We want the chin down toward the chest. So slide yourself enough that your shoulders sit down and the back of the headrest and your chin snuggles into that little pocket between the collarbones. If your lower back really is uncomfortable here, keep your knees bent, your feet grounded. Otherwise, you're going to extend your legs and attempt to roll the inner thighs down and point your toes up. So there's a tendency for the legs to splay and the toes to turn out here. I want you to counter that by rolling your inner thighs down and trying to put the toes straight up toward the ceiling. Unfold the arms Shavasana style. Take the tailbone deep into the body toward the ceiling. Look toward your cheeks. Elongate the lumbar with the action of the pelvic tilt. So there is effort here, but we're also cultivating quietness in the brain. We're starting to soften the sense organs. Try to soften the skin of your face. Keep your shoulders anchoring into the floor and the breastbone rising. Chin and chest really sealing together with every breath. And now we're going to leave this setup and I want you to leave the same way as I do. For a couple of reasons, one, it's easier, and two, we're gonna end up in the same place together. So bend your knees and put the soles of the feet on the floor, and you're gonna be sliding toward the head side. So slide up until your butt comes down, and then cross your legs and leave the legs elevated on whatever setup you're using. So now the lower back is grounded, you're in a cross-legged position, either ankles crossing or the bottoms of the feet can connect in Baddha Konasana if you prefer. And if you are crossing the legs, after a few more breaths, just change the crossing of the legs and give each side equal time. And you may prefer to stay here for Shavasana. If you're gonna transition, try to do so quietly, minimizing effort, not jarring the body or the brain. Try to keep a sense of quietness within you. And you're gonna either stay where you are or transition now. 
to your final resting pose. And take some time with that pose, reminding ourselves it is a pose. We need to adjust and fine tune the alignment. And we know we're there when the body feels even, spacious, and surrendered. And once you've gotten yourself into the corpse pose. Use every exhale as an invite to let go. Not only the effort from this class, but we all carry a default amount of contraction in the body. So going beyond the effort of this class and with every exhale, like every cell is a little clenched fist. Let the fist go. And trust that your breath is doing exactly what is needed. You don't need to condition your breath in any way. Observe the mind. Similarly, you don't need to control what's happening there. Just notice. Who are you when there isn't tension, when there isn't a problem? And now let your breath start to deepen, inviting a little more breath in and releasing a little more breath out. Letting the breath swell and then completely drain from the body. Take yourself back into easy breathing and just begin to invite very simple movement into the body. Fingers and toes, let the movement travel from the outermost parts of you inward toward center. Bending knees and elbows. Carry yourself to either side of your body, rest there for a few moments. And when you're ready, bring yourself to seated, finding your way into an energized, upright spine, lifted heart, holding the head a little higher, and then sealing the hands together in front of the heart. Relax your face. 
And let's take a deep breath in through the nose. And let it go. From the place within me that I know to be divine, I honor that place within each of you. Namaste. <clears throat> Right. Everybody, I hope you have a great weekend. And next week we're going to be eight o'clock, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Um, and I might be offering an additional restorative class. So just watch your email. I'm kind of uh, improvising as I go, but I do know I'm going to do the 8 a.m. Monday, Wednesday, Friday. So I hope to see you guys soon. Bye.